Hey guys, so last month this book came out and I have finally gotten around to reading it, the very highly anticipated and quite talked about recently, The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley, a foray into space opera that, though set in space, is not quite the science fiction you'd expect. No, this is unlike anything you've ever read before, I can guarantee you that above all else. Whether or not that'll be a good thing for you, it's fantastical dark weirdness and mix of ideas that could easily be hit or miss for whatever reader you are, is obviously up in the air until you pick it up for yourself, but for me personally, for sure had a lot lacking in almost every way, unfortunately. Though the ideas here are both fascinating and inventive, the execution is lacking. Uh, let's discuss that though, and you'll, I think, see for yourself whether or not this is a, a book you'd get into. Set within what can only be described as a mass of living world ships, succumbing, it seems, to the mortality all living things suffer through, a process of natural decay that, of course, affects the many organisms within it, floating through space, orbiting an artificial sun as the Legion. The organic living ships, planets, these terms interchangeable here, that make up the Legion all live in a sort of tenuous alliance in which there's some seriously odd, extremely hostile relations between the different families that rule these world ships. One especially great point of animosity is a world ship that seem to have broken away from the Legion, the Mokshi, and all those that attempt to approach this world ship are subsequently killed, all except apparently Zan, whom we're told at the same time that she is, as she's got no memory of anything at all, is the only one whom the Mokshi would let in, though she's truly got no idea why, and all those around her just refuse to divulge anything that might help her fully understand the situation. She wakes up one day uh, with no knowledge of who she is or where she's come from, on the Katazirna world ship, ruled over by the fearsome leader Anat, whose daughter Jade is in the process of possibly becoming a spouse to another world ship leader in order to make peace between their two warring families. Jade's the first person Zan sees, and Zan immediately feels a sort of connection to this girl whom, like with everything else around her, she seems to know nothing about. From there, it's a tangle of two different plot threads, Jade's political marriage and the highly secretive mission she set out for herself that seemingly involves the Mokshi, the Katazirna, Zan, and the future of the Legion, and on the flip side, Zan's trek through the many, many odd and organic layers of the living ship she woke up on. She must climb from the core of it, from the, the belly, so to speak, and fight for her life to survive. She encounters many peoples, creatures, monsters, and the wonders of the ship itself. She must eventually navigate her lost memory to understand what the milk she wants from her, why her memory is gone in the first place, what Jade is up to, and what role she actually has in this weird universe, all the while time ticks on these dying worlds. So what I've taken most away from this story is Cameron Hurley's ability to conjure up imagery, albeit admittedly super gross stuff that's visceral to a fault and that you, you really feel in your gut and underneath your fingernails. This is at times a bad thing, but with an idea like this, these ships that have this life to them that's like a mix between a forest and internal organs, it for sure fits with the story she's telling and the attitude of the characters she's writing about. She's got the conceptualization of these things down without either being too specific or too vague, but unfortunately it's just not enough to sustain anything else about it, for me at least. Uh, many of my issues with this stem from the characters and how their stories are written and divulged to us. Some of the secondary characters are interesting, though honestly a lot of what makes them stand out are just the odd and quirky things they do and say, rather than who they actually are and who they actually come across as. They're somewhat interchangeable, besides maybe one or two, and absolutely don't carry the story. And uh, there's no clear antagonist, there's a couple options for sure, as almost every character exists in the sort of gray area of doing whatever they have to do to get whatever they want, which is totally fine and actually stands out as a positive. But neither of the two main characters really stood out to me as all that different from one another, not least of which is because they're both written in first person. Uh, this is difficult to pull off for most authors, and in my opinion should generally be avoided, especially if there's no real personality there to separate the two, as in this, one of them has no memory of who she is, and the other just refuses to tell the reader anything besides the vaguest of uncontextualized obscurities as the author avoids spoiling any twist sooner than she'd like to. Which is easily my biggest pet peeve in any story, but in this one specifically, 
just absolutely took away from any enjoyment towards the book I might have felt in general. Uh, memory loss is so often a cliche and not done well that I immediately groan whenever it's used as a significant plot device. And in this, it's the whole story, either where with one of the main characters who literally only remembers things or is told things when it's convenient and not for any real rhyme or reason, or we're with the other main character who, though she's thinking to herself in her own head, her very own thoughts that no one else would be privy to, will never say anything before Cameron Hurley chooses for her to do so. It's just It just doesn't work or feel realistic for a character to constantly shy away from certain thoughts because it'd give away a secret too soon to the reader. Once or twice maybe, but it just becomes so obvious that this isn't organic and that's being orchestrated far too heavily. And that character should not have been written from a first person POV because her lack of specificity and the things she's thinking about, which are in turn the reasons why she's doing something very specific that she's doing, is just infuriating most of the time. You're doing all these things and refuse to actually delve into why. You're only dancing around it. Why would you be doing that? Her and Zan obviously have something going on, have had some sort of past connection or relationship, but I can feel absolutely nothing for that because it's neither characterized or fleshed out. One of them doesn't remember it, and the other one refuses to think about it because all these secrets surround Zan in the first place. You cannot have a story like that and expect me to be compelled by these characters and their relationship just because. They spend only a few pages together and then have nothing but obscurities thought towards one another during the rest. It's just poor storytelling, unfortunately. And as a whole, I'm beginning to feel that Cameron Hurley's fiction just isn't for me. I find the phrases and wording she uses oftentimes to be quite cringeworthy. I'm often editing the sentences she writes in my head so that they sound better and flow more naturally. I felt next to nothing for the characters, and despite how much memory loss was used to orchestrate the plot and its reveals, completely figured out what was going on and how the pieces fit together far before I was supposed to, so close to the beginning that it drove me crazy waiting for things to finally come to fruition towards the end. This wasn't this wasn't for me exactly, but the ideas and the creativity behind the world building and how that related to the characters and the plot may be worth your time, so I, I still suggest if any of it sounds interesting to you to give it a shot because it's still getting quite high praise elsewhere. Anyway, if you've read this, I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, whether you agree or disagree, feel free to share and discuss in the comments. Or if you're planning on picking, picking this up, uh, I'd love to know what stood out to you for you to want to do so. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you later with more.